to learn more about a new option for treating Parkinson's disease, call 1-800-664-5111 at extension 1070 or log on to newhopeforparkinsons.com. Despite its tremendous potential, deep brain stimulation may not be an option for many people who suffer from Parkinson's disease. Patients who do not respond well to initial medications are usually not considered candidates for this therapy. For this reason, researchers at the Penn Neurological Institute continue to search for a cure. In the Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorder Center here at Penn, um, we are testing currently uh, seven to eight new therapies. We have clinical trials ongoing all the time. Uh, these are drugs that are not available anyplace else unless they're being tested in a, in a clinical trial. Uh, several of these compounds are actually designed to affect the underlying disease process itself. Um, if we can prove that we have therapies that affect the disease process, it'll be a great leap forward in our quest to reduce the impact of Parkinson's disease and change its natural history. The University of Pennsylvania has a very large experimental therapeutics program for Parkinson's disease, which I think in some respects leads other centers in the country in terms of the number of clinical trials that we do and the way in which those trials are conducted. There have been so many important discoveries made through various research studies giving Dr. Poulter confidence that Parkinson's disease will someday be beaten. Research is a very important part of the treatment of Parkinson's disease, and I am fully confident that within my lifetime there will be a cure for this disease. It takes patient participation, it takes patience, uh, but I think it's coming. And the idea that people have started to take a step back and look at the mechanisms of cell death and target therapies toward that is a huge step forward in finding a cure for this disorder. Research studies offer a hopeful future for Parkinson's disease patients. But for now, Penn offers a variety of support programs to help patients in their daily struggle with this disorder. What I tell people a lot is that I think the experience of living with Parkinson's is bigger than what you can capture in a doctor's office. People in the support groups provide each other with a lot of support emotionally, informationally, um, just practically speaking, different kinds of things that have worked for them. Exercise is also an important factor in alleviating the life-altering changes associated with Parkinson's. Um, a lot of the things that happen with Parkinson's disease, such as postural changes or um, problems with rigidity, we can help ahead of time if we can teach people correct exercises and techniques to do so. Just hours after her procedure, the Penn team observes Mickey is showing no signs of complication. The MRI looks perfect. Yeah, right on the money. Within a month, Dr. Hertig views the surgery as a positive step for Mickey in her battle against the disease. He is confident that she will recover to live a better, happier life. Well, Mickey's a survivor and she's She's a fighter, and uh, she has always had a positive attitude about her illness. I think she's going to sail through this and, and continue to fight the good fight. And for Mickey's husband, this may be a fight that she has already won. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, it, it, it's a miracle from God. I've told a few people who uh, are familiar with <clears throat> the situation with Mickey, and they would say, uh, how she did it, I'd say, you will not believe it's a miracle. Um, so they actually came in and turned her on the following day. It was like flipping light switch. Just to see the big difference there. I don't have to depend on other people. That's the main thing, is I'm now able to do some stuff where I don't have to depend on other people. And you get your independence back, and that's the, that's the biggest thing. To ensure Mickey will remain in her improved state of health, Dr. Yagi will continually monitor her stimulator using a small control device. With it, he can quickly assess whether an adjustment is necessary. Pretty good. Can you do this? Wow. Okay. 
No, everything's going very well. I appreciate it. It is just weeks after surgery, and Mark Helms is enjoying the life he feared he would never see again. A lot of things that I had problems with are things you never used to think about, like putting a flu in your ear, eating a bowl of cereal, drinking a cup of coffee, combing your hair, shaving, are all little things that in the course of your life you don't even think about. And now I think about them and think, geez, this is great that I can do them without a problem. Mark has had almost complete suppression of his tremor. He's up and about. He's hardly taking any medication at all. And he's back to exercising and walking around and just really, really happy. He's recovered from his surgery, and I'm just delighted with his progress. When you see him, you can barely tell that he has Parkinson's disease, but he still has some minor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. It's not a cure. However, it really gives him the chance to do a lot of things he hasn't been able to do and a marked improvement in quality of life. I'm confident that I am much better off than when I went in. There's no doubt about it. And uh, that's the bottom line. The procedure you've seen tonight is just one example of the remarkable therapies available through the Penn Neurological Institute. If you would like more information concerning Parkinson's disease, log on to PennHealth.com to chat with doctors from this episode. Or call 1-800-789-PEN right now. You can even make an appointment. <laughs>